All right, YouTubers, I've never done a how-to video before, my first try, so give me a break. We are putting together the clutch hub and basket for a Harley Sportster. This is a particular model, it's a 2009 XL 883 Low, but it's the same for, eh, I forgot the years, a bunch of years, and other another Harley, uh, big V-twins besides the uh, Sportster. So right now, uh, I've got some oil sitting here. I got the extra plate, well, I made my own extra plate clutch, clutch kit. I got a barn, or a Alto kit here. So I got the nine friction plates, eight steel plates. I have a new pressure plate. This is the Barnett, 20% stronger than stock spring plate. And then some extra new parts here. And I actually just replaced the bearing in this. I bought this used off eBay. I think it was off a 2015 wrecked uh, Sportster with only like a couple thousand miles. But I still put a brand new bearing in it. I didn't want to risk uh, having an issue with the bearing because the, the problem I'm having now is a squeal that, uh, according to some text, is coming from the bearing on here. So that has a brand new bearing we just put in about a week ago. So right now we're going to take the nine friction plates and it says to soak them for about five ten minutes so we'll go ahead and drop them in here i'm actually just soaking them in uh some cheap uh or not cheap but it's v-twin oil uh wet clutch approved i'm actually going to be using the harley formula plus in it i uh flushed out the uh, transmission I tried some ATF it was recommended in some forms that oh try the uh, ATF in there um, supposed to work really well but all I found was ATF and uh, and there uh, finds all the leaks never had a problem with leaks before until I put the ATF in there all right I'm gonna sit for five minutes I'm gonna kind of flip the plates around I think I got it five minutes okay so <clears throat> I uh, ran some, I think it was Valvoline 2050 non-synthetic uh, V-twin oil. I ran a quart through it, drained it, it was still red. So I ran another quart through, drained it again. Now it's not red, so I'm going to use what I just drained out of it. Only has a couple miles on it. I was using it just to flush out the uh, transmission and the primary. So we'll soak that for five minutes and then I'm going to flip the plates over uh, when the timer goes off. Timer's going off. Timer's going off there. All right. All right. <clears throat> so I was, as I was uh, saying, I, I there was one of the Harley forums or Sportster forums actually that uh, there's probably like 30 different people swore by running ATF in there, helped it ship smoother, um, find neutral easier when when it was cold, it would uh, get rid of that cold cold early morning clank when you shift it into gear but uh, all I found was I never had a problem with oil leaking before um, I always put new seals on uh, replace gasket seals every time I do the oil change it's a few extra bucks but I always do it but anyways I uh, I try the uh, ATF in there and I had oil coming out the drain plug um, oil coming out the inspection cover and uh, the chain uh, adjuster and coming out the shaft for the uh, the shift shaft, it was just there, there was ATF coming out everywhere. So, really don't recommend uh, recommend uh, the ATF. <laughs> and I didn't even really notice much of a difference. Um, so, anyways, got these. We'll do another five minutes on the other side, and then we will get back to uh, putting these in here. All right. It is time. Nope. Okay. So now what you do is you take them out. Um, you can either set them on side and let all the oil drain off or wipe them off with a lint-free cloth. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start with the friction plate. You got nine frictions and you have eight steel. You're going to put a friction plate in, then a steel plate, then a friction, then a steel until you have all of them in there. You should start or you not should you have to start with the friction and end with the friction because the hub down there is steel and the pressure plate steel 
So you're gonna first one you put in will be friction and then we'll alternate steel friction, steel friction until we get all of them in there. Um, I'm going to pause the video because I don't have anybody to help me and uh, I don't have a tripod. So I'm gonna put them in uh, and then I'll pick up after they are all in there. All right, so I got them all in there and I realized I'm not gonna be able to finish this up till tomorrow when I pull the other basket off the bike because they need the adjuster screw. To, oh, to use the compression tool to get the spring on there. So, tonight, I'm just going to take this. This is the pressure plate. So, I take this, and it goes, whoop, it's like the camera here, like that. So that goes on top there. Then, this spring will go here. And then, what we would do after this is we would put the clutch release bearing in here with the adjuster screw, pop that on there, get the retaining ring in there. But since we don't have it, we're gonna have to finish up that part tomorrow. So that's what it looks like when you get it done, minus the retaining ring that will hold all this in. So if you see the compression tool has to push these fingers down below there in order to get the retaining ring in there. And this is a heavy duty spring plate. I have actually, um, this heavy duty spring plate puts a lot of tension on there. I've used the compression tool before when replacing this and I've had the fingers break. This has got so much tension on it. Uh, I originally went back to a 15% stronger than stock clutch, but I don't like the way it feels. Um, I think this one is harder on the uh, clutch release bearing or the throw out bearing and I think it's, it also causes more tension on the, the basket bearing but I like the way it feels better I once the uh, oh and the reason I'm replacing the clutch basket in the hub is because I had that uh, wonderful Harley spring plate or the little uh, that grenade blow up with the rivets that uh, disintegrate and the spring plate comes apart so on my, the one that's on the bike now, I've got the grooves inside on the hub and on the basket. So that's why we're replacing um, the hub and basket is because uh, it's got the grooves in there. It still seemed to operate just fine, uh, especially with this 20% stronger plate. But I found this on eBay a while back. Someone had an auction on it and they spelt it Sportster S P O R S. T E R instead of sport S P O R T S T E R. So they spelt it wrong. So if you were searching for a sportster part, you'll come up with a sportster spark. <laughs> so no one bid on it. So I picked this thing up for $29.99 uh, with only a couple thousand miles from a salvage yard. Um, I say the bearing looked fine in it, but I decided to go ahead and replace the bearing anyways. So tomorrow, um, well, it'll be the same video. You won't really know the time difference. But tomorrow I'm going to pull off the basket that's in there and we'll put this one in. Um, you can do this on the bike too if you weren't changing out the basket. Uh, you just use the compression tool there and uh, do it while it's on the bike. It's much easier because it is a pain in the butt to break that those nuts loose in there. Here, just let me give you an idea here. I purchased one of these off eBay. Um, I don't know if you can see what happened to it there. Uh, I was trying to break the, the nuts loose and just crunched it. That didn't work. That was a waste of money. And then I also had one of these. I bent it back. But I had one of those lock things where you put in, uh, put in like this between there and the, this, the stator gear. And uh, when I was cranking down trying to break it loose, this piece actually bent and did a V. And my breaker bar spun real quick and I smashed the shift lever. I thought I really jacked it up, but luckily I was able to get everything back in place. I hammered this back down with a hammer. But um, if you're going to buy stuff, I really recommend buying um, actual items from maybe Harley or, or a reputable dealer, not off eBay. Because I definitely got what I paid for. I uh, uh, bought both of those things off eBay that were, were a little bit cheaper to try to... Uh, locked the hub so I could break the nets loose and it was a I paid the price uh, what I ended up using that worked was just a, I went on YouTube and some guy said use one of your old lady's dish towels and to my surprise I, 
wadded up a dish towel, threw it in between the chain and the sprockets, and it actually worked. I was able to break the uh, nut loose and torqued it back up. So, uh, I guess more of the story. Buy quality parts or use a dish towel. All right, I will we'll pick up here tomorrow and uh, finish up the job. Peeps, whatever, back again. Uh, it's actually not tomorrow, it's still the same night. I couldn't let it lie, so here is this little thing here. See, we're going to put this in there. Okay, this is harder to do when I'm looking through a freaking camera. All right, so that goes in there. Then we gotta put the retaining ring to hold that in place. Going to see if I can do this with my left hand while I hold the camera with my right. Ah. See how talented I am. Booyah! I think it's actually in place. I didn't hear it snap though. Okay. I'm going to double check, make sure that's in place. Alright. So that seems pretty sturdy. So next is attaching the compression tool so you can get the retaining clip on there. All right, I'm gonna, this piece here, uh, go on there, and I gotta screw it on. So I'm gonna do that because I'm gonna need both hands, so I'll be right back. All right, one thing that's important is to screw this all the way down as far as it goes. Don't just get it on part way and stop. You need to get it as down as far as it goes in order to get maximum compression on this spring. All right, so I am going to take this piece now. Okay, I just need to look at it now through the camera. All right, so that goes on there. Then this, and goes here. This is really hard to do with the camera in one hand, and I'm trying to do all shoot with my left hand. Yeah, I think I'm going to pause the camera while I hold this in place and I'll be right back. So this piece has to go on here now, okay? That goes on there first. This can go on afterwards when you get on there because you don't have to be a magician because it's opened up. Alright, ah, be right back. Okay, so now I'm going to take the wrench and put it here. I got a 16. I think it's actually, oh, wow. That is not the right wrench. Be right back. Okay, back again. Uh, I don't recommend this while you're having uh, seven and seven, or wait, no, that's rum and coke, something like that. Because I confused uh, nine sixteenth, the sixteenth millimeter, so. See, it's nine sixteenth. And then what you do is you gotta start cranking her down. I'm gonna need both my hands, so I'm gonna have to hold this with one hand while I crank on the other, so we'll come back when I have it compressed. Yeah, I'm stopping for a sec, just to let you know. One thing I do is make sure that these teeth here and the spring plate, or the pressure, or pressure yeah, whatever, are uh, not overlapping, because if you do, this isn't wanna, gonna wanna push the spring out. It's gonna hang up and you can break the pressure plate. Another reason not to drink while doing this is you don't want to forget this. This was a real bitch to undo just now <laughs> without that washer on there. Okay, so we're going to line this up a little better. I think it was hanging up. But you want to try to make sure that when you do put it on, that the this here and these grooves are evenly on each side of this. So when it pushes down... The spring doesn't hang up on this. Alright, when you do do this, you want to get the spring plate. Man, I can't focus. Hey, yeah, focus. You want to get the spring plate just below that groove on those teeth. Um, so you don't have to put... That way you're not putting any uh, more pressure than you need to on the uh, pressure plate here where that retaining clip is. Like I said before, I have broke that retaining, or this pressure plate before where the retaining clip comes up trying to crank down on here. We actually have a stress fracture in the other pressure plate, but I've got 
plenty of backups because it's kind of common. So I've decided to 86 the Barnett 20% plate and we're going with the 15%. Um, I forgot what brand this is. I think it was Rev something or other. That I took off my current one. This is the other one. So we're going to put this one on here instead and got a new uh, friction plate there. All right. I mean friction plate. Okay, that's like my seventh drink. Pressure plate. Be back in a minute. Okay. Finally got this fucking thing in there. I wonder, I did not buy an extra plate clutch, clutch kit. I made my own. I bought a regular clutch kit and then realized it was short a friction plate and two, or yeah, something like that. So I ordered an extra plate. So I'm wondering if the thicknesses of the plates are a little different for the extra plate clutch kit. Cause I really had to crank down on this fucking thing and really tweak it to get these in here. And I think that's why I broke the last pressure plate. So I'm gonna inspect it real quick, make sure I don't have any cracks in that pressure plate and take the, the compression tool off. All right, so one of the problems I had was I kept chewing up these 8885B Harley bearings. So I'm gonna uh, switch it out and use a different one. I have a 720B single row angular bearing I pressed into this uh, over here. And we're gonna use that one on the new one and see if it does any better. Uh, I've only got 40,000 miles on the bike and after the extra plate clutch kit and the extra strength Barnett spring, I started chewing these bearings up about every 8,000 miles. Um, so I'm gonna try the new bearing that's in there. Pop it in there. Here's the old one, the old hub and basket. I don't know if you can see where the scarring is. Kind of hard to tell. Um, I don't know if I can turn on. I don't think I can turn on the, on the light. But uh, when that clutch pack blew up, or the spring plate blew up right there, so there's a line, a circular circle in there, kind of even line. That's from the uh, that uh, stupid spring plate that exploded like a grenade. So I'm gonna swap out the adjuster screw put it in here pop that back in here and then uh i don't know this is still the same night i was going to take a break but um i've had a few of those over there and i'm ready to rock and roll <laughs> all right be back in a minute well that is basically it for getting the clutch pack in actually this part can't go on until we get this back on the bike because you gotta put the nut on there so i'm gonna go put this back on the bike um i've got to probably sell the old one on ebay it actually doesn't look like there was anything wrong with it the, i just checked the specs in the bearing and the bearing's fine so hopefully the squeal i was getting was from the clutch packs if not the squeal is probably coming from inside the transmission and that's not going to be fun so i'll go put this back on and do a short a little bit more once I get it on there to show you what it looks like. Okay, so we're looking at torque specs. And it says, bye 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 bye. Titan engine sprocket and nut to 190 to 210 foot pounds of torque. So I got it back on there, but we got to torque it down. So the one on the left needs to be 200 foot pounds of torque clockwise. The one on the back, Counterclockwise. Du, 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 du. See, there's that cheap. I were I bought a cheap one of those and it bent. Uh, let's see here. Du, 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 du. All right, we're gonna do that and I'll get back to you. So we're gonna do the front one first. Got my towel there to put in the sprocket to lock it, and we're gonna tighten her down. To, uh, it says 190 to 210, we're going to do 200, 200 foot pounds. Okay, got that one done to 200 pounds. I'm out of breath. That is uh, pretty hard to do, especially with this stupid towel. I had to redo it. The towel went all the way through the <laughs> sprocket the first time. Chewed it up. All right, the back one is a lot less. Let me look it up and I'll tell you in a second. Oh, thank goodness. Clutch nut, 70 to 80. What do you do at 75? Uh, engine sprocket, 190 to 2. Oh, shit. 
Two of six. Damn it. Hmm. Oh, I have the 2009. Hopefully it's the same amount of torque. Oh well. You've got to be shitting me. 2007 later. Engine sprocket. 240 to 260. Fucking serious? Okay. We're gonna torque it a little more. We probably got it to like 220, 230 in the front. I could not get it to 240. I couldn't get the torque bridge to click. The bike wanted to take off. And even with the rag in there, it was about to spin all the way through. Getting the back to 80 was easy after I should have done the back first. Because hitting that uh, click at 80 seemed way too easy. <laughs> So anyways, they're back on now. Now we gotta put the uh, clutch release bearing and adjust your screw back in there. And I'm not sure if we'll put that back on tonight or not. I'm getting kind of spent. And here's all the extra pieces all sorted out here. Gaskets and whatnot. <sighs> here's a new gas tank for later. That'll be another episode maybe. Um, bought this supposedly new gas tank. It's got the shit beat out of it on top there. So it's gonna need some body work. All right. And then I made some nice lines on my tank there for my knuckles dragging against it while I was trying to torque the uh, torque that uh, engine sprocket down. All right. We'll get back to you later. Okay. Got it all buttoned back up and all back together. Took it for about a 20 mile test drive. Really got on it. The squeal is gone. So thank goodness it wasn't something in the transmission. I think it, I actually don't think it was the brand. I think it was the clutch pack. Um, I could tell uh, after having a new clutch pack in there that uh, it was not grabbing right before. Um, it really grabs now even with that 15% stronger spring versus the Barnett 20% stronger than stock spring. It uh, is grabbing and, and taking off. There's no squeal. It's shifting great. And this is something I always do when after I work on it, just to make sure I don't have any leaks. I took it on a 20 mile ride, got on it pretty good. I put some paper towels down underneath it and tape it down. And it's been sitting overnight now. This is the next morning. And there is no spots of oil. I know everyone thinks that Harley's just leak oil all the time, but I do. that's not acceptable for me. So I always keep on on that. So after sitting overnight, um, nothing on the paper towel. It's not dripping at all, so it's all uh, back together and running great. Um, this was my first attempt at making a how-to video, and I know it sucked, um, especially the camera work. Um, I don't know. If I decide to do any more of these, I might either get my kid to help me or set something up on a tripod or maybe strap a GoPro to my head. I don't know. But uh, I just went back and was watching some of the video. My camera's all over the damn place, and it looked like I was trying to do stuff while looking through the camera instead of looking at what I was doing. Uh, that and I probably had about nine or 10 drinks, which probably don't recommend when you're working on your motorcycle, probably not the safest thing to do. But the next morning I double checked everything before I uh, threw it all back together when uh, I was completely sober. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I don't know, hope you enjoyed it. Probably got seasickness or motion sickness from the camera work and Probably can't understand what the hell I'm saying half the time because I mumble. Anyways, catch you next time if I make another one.